Dr. Chakalingam is from Rajapalayam, down south of Tamil Nadu. Karasal Kattil Vilayindha Vairam. Kandaritha Vairam. He is from a simple background. He has got one son. He is studying in the US. Dr. Chakalingam, fondly we call him as Chokhs. He is a very humble person. And in spite of great achievements, he remained as simple as always in the last 35 years. He is an excellent volleyball player and was part of a college team when Mafai Pandirajan, I think he belongs to 81 match, was the captain, volleyball team. Chok, Chok, he never misses our batch yearly get together. Recently, also in Coimbatore near Anakati, we held that get together. He played volleyball. He is not a. He was one of the top rankers in his class, and many of his batchmates, mainly EC, they were looking west for higher studies and settling there. Chuck chose to remain here and contribute in academic development in India, in the premier institute, now heading EC department in IIC Bangalore. His education, he passed out in, as I said, in 84 BEC. He did the MTech from IIT Kharagpur. He did his PhD in IIT Bangalore. If you go Google it, you will find a lot of uh, uh, many achievement in terms of uh, many PhD guidance and so many other things. I will read few of his achievement professionally. He is a professor and head of the department chair, department of EC, IIT Bangalore. He is fellow Indian National Science Academy, fellow Indian. Academy of Sciences, Fellow National Academy of Science India, Fellow Indian National Academy of Engineering, JC Bose National Fellowship DST Government of India, Suvarna Jayanti Fellowship DST Government of India. He has also written a book, I think he will explain, a very important book I think. In a, and all, he, will, he is going to talk about a contemporary topic, 5G implementation, I think he will talk more on that. It is not only a technology topic. Is more about how to implement in India and other so many others. He'll be knowing better. With this, I will leave it to him. We all welcome. I uh, invite Mr. Dr. Chukalingam to come. So, first of all, um, I should th thank the office bearers of uh, uh, PhD Tech Alumni Association Chennai chapter for giving me this uh, nice opportunity. Um, it was a lot of uh, pleasant memories. I came from Bangalore to come here for this talk. And uh, I thank all the office bearers. And uh, I have particularly, I have to, uh, uh, it was nice seeing Dr. Radhakrishnan Nair with us, with me particularly. Now, uh, I have not attended your classes, sir. I belong to the EC batch. So, but then I have interacted with him in the last uh, few years on hosting some important talks in the campus and so on and so forth. And what I found in him was, a very energetic person and enthusiastic person. So if I can, uh, you know, carry some percentage of this energy and enthusiasm at that age when he is now, uh, I'll be more than happy at that point. So we have a lot of things to learn from you, sir, to be very energetic and enthusiastic. So uh, I also see a lot of people who have uh, a lot of experience in front of them and a lot of experience to share with us, senior um, uh, PhD alumni and uh, I'm very pleased to see you because uh, at one fine day we will be also sitting in the front rows. We are in the middle rows, so we'll be sitting in the front rows later. I also would like to thank the 2018 batch, a couple of students who have uh, uh, graduates who have passed out, so you're on the back bench. So pleased to see you because I interact often with the 2018 graduates, 2015 graduates as my PhD students and uh, so on and so forth. So with that, uh, 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 prelude. I'll just uh, make one small comment. Uh, Sri Chandrasekhar uh, mentioned that this uh, meeting should be for alumni and for alumni and alumni and it should be light. Right? But then I'm trying to talk about something that looks serious. So for people who are worried, oh, this is another presentation using uh, PPD slides. Don't worry, I have only few slides. <laughs> for some people who said, no, your talk should be a little more serious, you know, should be structured, you know. For them also, don't worry, I have few slides. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what I'm going to talk about is just a little uh, glimpse. So I now am in the EC Department of Indian Institute of Science. So I just have a 30 second to 45 second 
a glimpse of our department because that helps people who are like 2018 batch and 2015 and 16 batch of students to know what are the options they have in front of them in India, particularly when they want to grow into a research and a master's program and graduate studies. Because a lot of people we say are graduating uh, back in the US and uh, Europe and even Australia, and they should know that in India we have good programs. So this is the EC department where I'm right now, and it was uh, founded in 1947. The building itself, stone was laid by Prime Minister uh, Jawaharlal Nehru in 1948, and he later came back in 1951 and opened the building when, when it was inaugurated. So a lot of uh, uh, big personalities have graduated through this uh, uh, department, and I myself took my PhD from this department and then joined back as a faculty where I'm now a professor. So we have a group of about 100 plus PhD students in the department. 100 plus is a big number given a small department. 200 people department, 100 plus students are PhD students with us. About 70 students are MTech research and MTech students, master's students, and about 25 uh, faculty members with a lot of reputation and uh, background. And we are about a family of 200 uh, people, so uh, whom I am heading as a service. It's uh, not by anything like, you know, you just serve as a head because you have to take care of the department. Three years before somebody else did it for the department, now I do it for the department as a matter of service to the department and the institute, okay? So we take students for PhD and masters through GATE and um, uh, an interview and people who graduate after a PhD with four to five years of uh, time spent with us, they go to good places for postdoc positions, they go to industries in good jobs, and then they come back as faculty members in IIITs, IITs, NITs, and so on and so forth. So it's a good place to be in. So this few minutes of um, talk is to just uh, let people know, if you come across people who want to do graduate studies, which is going to be the future of uh, education in India, particularly higher education in India, I encourage them to uh, look at the possibility of coming to IIC, particularly to our department, okay? So now let me talk about, let, let me make it a little light in the sense that there are only um, uh, concepts related uh, material rather than uh, very deeply academic. So 5G, 5G, it is something related to cell phone technology, okay? A generation of cell phone technology in a more academic sense we will, or uh, technological sense we will say, uh, cellular communication technology, okay? So now, where does India stand? So when um, Paneer asked me to talk about education, I said, okay, these uh, new technologies and education are interrelated. You cannot separate education from technology and technology from education. So I thought, let me talk about what I know better. Of course, I'm part of the education system, as in when I make a remark about education, so uh, it'll come automatically, is what I said. So where does India stand, right? Should it stand anywhere? Your question should be well posed to get a good answer. Right? So that is very important. So I post this question. It looks to me it's an ill post question. Where does it stand? It doesn't look to me a good question. But nonetheless, I just wanted to make that point because I believe that India should stand somewhere in the new technological uh, climb up as we go along in the coming decades. So I want to look at, can we have some answer to this question? Where does the uh, country stand in terms of technology in general? 5G, where I just do some research and then uh, have some contributions there with along my students and uh, researchers. So that is where I just picked up. This, this is about the title, okay? So first let me call up one uh, Sri Nandan Elekeni to start. Nandan Elekeni, I think many of us know, right? Okay, I don't uh, call upon him as founders Infosys or other chief once and now CEO Infosys, right? But as an author of a book. So this book, some of you might have read, he wrote somewhere in the 2009 or 2010, Imagining India, Ideas for the New Century. Okay, so it's about a 500 uh, page book, so which I read sometime in 2010. And whenever you read a book, after five, 10 years, you will remember one or two ideas from that book rather than what it was all about, right? So in this book, he has written a lot of things about many things. He talked about demographic dividend, population being taken as an advantage rather than a drawback. Talked about government, policies, education, higher education, in, uh, IT, infrastructure, everything, many things, uh, even uh, elections, a lot of things he wrote about. 
But what struck me in mind was one or two paragraphs, right, which I struggled hard to find from that book two days back before uh, I came up and made a slide. And this is the one slide material of that one or two paragraphs. That is very enlightening for me for this talk particularly, 5G, right? It is something to do with infrastructure expansion, right? We have infrastructure. It is not that we do not have roads. We are expanding. It is not that we do not have rails. We are expanding. It is not that we are not having phones. We are expanding. It is not that we do not have internet connectivity. We are expanding. So the theme is expansion in the coming decades. And more importantly, is connecting the country, okay? A lot of infrastructural projects are there, a lot of areas are there, and among that, connecting the country. So, he says, or he writes, in the West, how these important sects, um, expansion of uh, projects have happened, in particularly starting with rail systems, telephone lines, road network, air travel, internet. Okay? See, for the West, particularly call that West as US, right? The rail systems were in the 19th century were done and perfectly done well, okay? And they had a distinct epoch of time to do that without any other overriding technology come and interfering. So rail was done. Then came this cable, copper cables run throughout the country, telephones, in the early 20th century, right? So it was done and beautiful tall quality voice back in the early 20th century was done and without any interlap, overlap with any other technology, distinct epoch. And road network expanded again mid or early 20th century. So though they had the luxury, I would say, of defining a technology or an expansion project, do it for decades. And the last one, air travel, for example, 1950s, air travel has become very popular those days, right? Even in the in the US. And the last thing that says the fourth major infrastructure expansion project is internet. And when the internet happened, everything was there. They had a super class rail system, a telephone uh, network, a road network, air network, everything was connecting the country. A, connect, connect, a country can be as strong as how it is connected. If it is well connected, it's a strong country, right? They had connected. Now internet has happened. Now look at India, right? All the uh, things that we talk about, ro uh, rail, telephone, road, air travel, internet, they're all starting up expanding in the late 90s, right? We had something before when we took it from the British, right? Some railroads, some roads, some telephones, this and that, but primarily to support their commercial interests. But then we did not do much expansion till 90s. So we do expand on 90s and then everything fall on us simultaneously. So roads are being built. Now you talk about every newspaper talking about road expansion, right? Every uh, paper again now talks about air connectivity being increased. Just two weeks back I saw an uh, article from the minister saying that we are going to open 100 airports, new airports in the next 10 to 15 years, investing 4 lakh crores of rupees, right? So we are expanding. And they say that civil aviation, particularly air travel is grown in the two-digit uh, growth uh, trajectory. And then they say we are going to overtake England, we are going to overtake Japan, we are going to overtake uh, Germany in number of passengers being traveled. So it means we are looking at that in 2030, 2015, air travel is going to be as common as just like what we see on the metro. And every city, metro, every city, again, cell phones. So that is the talk. So the point is, the cell phone technology is another major uh, engine on which we grew our telephone systems. Otherwise, we were just waiting for getting one uh, uh, telephone number for years. But then now we just at the flash of a second, right, we get a number. All you have to have is an Aadhaar card and some ID, you get it. Okay? Should we feel happy about it? Yes and no. Yes part everybody knows. All of you have a cell phone. All of you have a cell phone. I also have a cell phone. And I used to have a very old cell phone which my son used to you know, make a, take a dig at me. So you are still having S4. Now you have S8. Then two weeks back I said, you are also behind. Now S9. Right? So it is kind of, what is S? To me, Samsung. Samsung. It is not India. iPhone, that I is not India. Nokia, it is no India. Right? So there is a big gap. 
the, the country has given you the resources, but we are not making it. Should we make it? Okay. Let us look at some real numbers, hardcore numbers, because when we speak in academic uh, world, we say give data, proper data. Don't talk in the air. Give precise statements. Give supporting statements. Make everything precise. So India's imports bill, right? I have heard this from a lot of people from my own uh, community, like academic as well as industrial people. Next to oil, next to oil, the major import bill comes from telecom equipment. Read telecom equipment as base stations, cell phone towers and cell phones and so on and so forth. Okay? Let us look at some numbers. This is a report of 2017 and 18 by uh, Commerce Ministry, Commerce and Industry, Ministry of Commerce. It is, it is good that the transparencies are taking shape in the country. It is available on the internet. All you have to do is just search in the internet this uh, PDF file you get, you have to read through, maybe 169 pages. But what is relevant for me was only two pages and two charts. Look at this chart. This is the 100% of India's import in 2017-18. And that money is 298 billion US dollars. I cannot convert that into crores, but I'll convert a smaller number later. That number is also a big number, right? 298 US billion dollars, right? Among that, you see this petroleum is 18%. Gold, we know, right? We are a consumer country of gold, 8%. Then comes pearl, gemstones, semi-precision stones, another 7%. This one, who has made it in the top five, right? Top five is telecom instruments, and that telecom instruments is essentially base stations. Whatever you see, click, 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 you are, uh, uh, WhatsApp messages go to your group instantaneously, right? Instantaneously it goes, right? It's an engine. That engine is in full operation, right? How much is the money? 5% of two or 300 billion dollars is 15 billion dollars a year. 15 billion US dollars. Now I did the calculation again and again and again. It is 1 lakh crores at 65 to 70 rupees conversion rate. 10 lakhs of crores. And that, uh, I felt bad because I changed the phone when my S4 fell down and cracked on the screen. I had to buy a new one. I bought a 7,500 rupees phone. When I saw this number, I should have bought a 3,000 rupees phone. Right? Because it goes. The money goes. We are enriched. We have opportunities open for us. Commerce is open. Entertainment is open. Uh, getting together is open. Everything is fine. It's a revolution. It's a social revolution, technology for social revolution, yes. But then I am paying hell a lot of money. All the money goes out. They share. Who shares? Phone man manufacturers share that money. Operators take some money. Who is giving you money, right? Uh, the service. So every business was uh, taken that, and we have not looked at it seriously. Now I think it is high time we, are, we have to take it seriously. Because, just imagine, a 10% to 20% of this to be retained with us for us. For me, for you, which means my research will go well. For you, a good job for you. A startup with the initial grants, a venture capital money from the government, right? Or whatever we can be doing. And that will be again 10,000 crores. 10%. 10,000 crores a year, which is phenomenal. I think people are wanting that. The younger generation want it and they deserve it, we have to give. So in other words, what we have to do is create this, those technologies here. Do we not have the intellectual capital to do this? We have. We have. We have more than enough, but we have to channelize. I think Government of India is planning to launch into that kind of an activity in the years to come. Whatever may be the government, one or the other, government has to listen to this realities and then set the development agenda. So 5G in that sense is very important for us. Okay? So where were, one, where were 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G? Because this is the fifth generation. That, that means there was first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation, so on. So let's see, where are they? Okay? First generation, in the US, telephone lines were there in the early 20th century, but Still in the late 20th century, they invented cell phones. It is the US who invented the cell phone. 
people think that it is the need which will drive the innovation. Not necessary. There is a competitiveness. The urge to do things new always, right? Cell phone, uh, cell phone was not needed. In fact, the quality of cell phone when it was in, invented by Bell Labs was very poor. Why would people use a cell phone? At that time, it was not called a radio. A radio phone, when you have a beautiful landline, which crystal clear, toll quality voice. But then they did it. And that is 1G, analog, right? And then Bell Labs golden years, along with transistors and so many inventions in the Bell, in the country, in the US, that created the cell phone, okay, 1980s. Okay, go back here, commercial cell phones, 1980s, okay? Now we are in 2020, close to that. I round it off always, because eight and nine doesn't matter, 20. Okay, then comes a competition, okay? US is dominating, and then where are we? Europeans group together, and then they create a technology, we have to get a better technology. And that is what say, you guys are doing analog, we will do digital. And by that, they group all the countries in the European Union, that EU was not there even at, at that time, but then they created the TDMA technology, which is a yeah, digital technology, 2G. So 2G was something which we bought. And initial days were uh, uh, different, now things are different. So 1G, we were not part. India was not part, not even no, even in colleges. See, universities and academic positions, places, are the places where you have to seed these new ideas. When I studied, 1G was not taught, or not known. You did not teach, you can teach fundamental strong, right? But it was not known. 2G, maybe a little later, right? And uh, at that time, there is a bigger, uh, you know, uh, uh, gap between US and uh, Europe. Europe was dominated worldwide, right? US thought that it is the leader, and then they kept to themselves as analog cellular is ours, and no more thing to be done. But Euro uh, Europeans did the TDMA, which is 2G. And they spread it around uh, all over the place, like uh, Korea, Japan, and other places. Then comes US going back, saying that I have to get my place back, my place back. That is when this Qualcomm, as a company, proposed another new technology called CDMA technology. And to make things shorter, the 5G government is trying to follow that. 5G India is trying to push and help the people who are capable of carrying it forward to the uh, international uh, arena from India, government is trying to do that. Okay, so 2G, there is a fight somewhere else. We got TDMA technology. People have started getting six rupees per incoming call. No, outgoing call. Six, uh, no, three rupees for one incoming call. That was the time, maybe 90s, late 90s. When I came back here, 98, I had a Motorola phone all like this. Very fun to keep it. And I will be worried all the time. If, the, if there is an incoming call, if nobody is of interest to me, three rupees gone. Because incoming call is charged, six, uh, three, three rupees per minute. Outgoing, six, six rupees per minute. Very expensive though, right? So from that point of view, making it accessible on a wide spectrum of people is a big achievement for the government. Because it said that is a platform on which you can do a lot of things. That is a resource like rail, road, and air we have to give you, and government gave it. That's a good thing, right? Then comes evolution. I have to increase the, not voice alone, not digital data alone, I want to increase, because the digital world is waking up. A lot of data is created in the uh, so-called images, videos, and other things are coming, and 3G. Again, 3G, who are the players? Now, Korea has joined 3G. Europe, Korea, and Japan has joined 3G, and we are not there. What are we talking about? Usage. Usage was primarily big in India. Then 4G, even bigger. Better technology. Forget about the technology because this is a bigger audience of a variety of people. So bigger. Every time you increase the rate, every time you increase the rate, the rate of transmission is faster. And the effect of it is you just click a website and if it takes a long time to download, slow connection. Zoop, if it downloads, quick connection. We are heading towards that. You, should not, you do not want to wait. Immediately it has to go. So 4G. Now China has come in. 3G, they made a splash. Made a splash in the sense, I will be part of it. But nobody considered them seriously in 3G. Okay? Now 4G, they have come and Huawei has established as a big company. Right? Now 
Indian operators are talking to Huawei to get 5G solutions, right? Now, US is worried about 5G dominance. Will it shift to China? That is a change. So everybody has to get in somewhere. And Europe did it in 2G. Korea also did it to some extent, 2 to 2.5 to 3G. China did it 3 to 4G. And India is wanting to make it 4 to 5G. 4 to 5G. Do you have the wherewithal? Of course, yes. Okay, that is the main thing. Okay, so this slide is something which is uh, very generic in the sense. Oh, yes. Yeah. Fine. So this is the wireless data growth. I think everybody has a cell phone, so it is exponentially growing. Exponentially growing. You, your capability to generate is very high. And from a technologist point of view, we are not running behind much, right? We are also accelerating in the sense Moore's law. If I have to pick some uh, takeaway from this is the rate at which you are going to transmit from a wireless device, be it a base station or your cell phone or a Bluetooth, whatever it is, it is growing at the rate of doubling every 18 uh, months. That is Moore's law. We know that transistors integration happened doubling every 18 months. Wireless transmission capabilities are increasing in a rate that is doubling every uh, 18 months. So in other words, a yeah, factor of 1000, that is 2 power 10, 2 power 10 is 1024, round it off to 1000. A yeah, 1000 uh, increase, 1000 times increase in rate has happened already in the past 15 years. Right? 15 years is 180 months. 180 18 months is 10 times 18 months. So 2 power 10, 1024. And this trend continues. And that is where 5G will give you a lot more data rate than what you will get as 4G. Okay? So the capability wise, technology stable operating point where, where products are available, you buy that prod those products, spend 100 rupees, let me get 140 rupees back. 40 rupees is the growth for me. This is business. 2G, 3G, 4G, all are happening here. But who, who are doing this? A technology trigger, which we call as a technology, a new idea. Where does it get triggered? It is in R&D labs, universities, good universities, good quality researchers, good research labs. Right? Do we have any trigger for that in India? So far, we have not been told that this is a hype cycle, which a technology gets triggered here. Everybody talks about it. Now 5G, everybody talks about it. My classmate shared from Qatar saying that Qatar is the first country to deploy 5G. 5G is not deployed anywhere. It is not even certified yet. But people are taking positions, including Qatar, saying that we are rolling out. Of course, I do not say that they have developed anything, but India should develop. Because we are spending a lot of money on that. And a lot of hype will be created. Now, 5G hype is that, right? 5G, any new technology, a lot of hype will be created. A lot of uh, articles will be re create, uh, read. Uh, written and then at some point in time you build a thing and it will not work and people will start blaming you so you'll go down the hill right you will get dejected companies will close people will go to other companies that is the valley and at this point you do a revision of the product and that is the second phase of product and somebody still gives you money to develop and then you be more realistic with the objectives later and then slowly build up your market space for this and then live longer Right? Ecosystem, both academia, industry, and all the entrepreneurs, they have to go through this cycle. However tough it is, it is easy. Once you know that this has to be done, it is easy. So investment is going to be here, and 5G government is pl planning to do support academia, startups, Indian startups, and Indian industry, so that they can go through this cycle, and then eventually, when 5G happens in 2020, you will be a good uh, contributor to 5G from the Indian point of view, is what the plan is. This I'll skip because this is technical. Technical. These are all technical. Okay, so this is the last five minutes. I will just do three minutes. Do I have another five minutes or three minutes? Okay, five minutes. Okay, good. So India plans to roll out 5G services for consumers by 2020. Just recognize that ITU is the Indian tele uh, the International Telecommunic uh, Telecommunication Union is the international body which certifies, yes, yes, standards is this. It is certified for manufacturers to man manufacture as per the standard and then roll out, okay? That is expected as 2020. So people already talk about 
we are ready for 5G. We are going to roll out 5G and the users are also excited. We will get 5G. We will get 1 gigabit per second and multi gigabit per second transmission rates. Okay? But the reality is this. Okay? And India do a plans to develop a robust 5G ecosystem in India. We want to make our presence this time, not just buy and then roll out, but we want to go to the standardization body in ITU, in 3GPP. These are all standardization body where the developing organizations go and push for their ideas. If they have a technology, they will go and push. This is what it should be there in the standard so that the worldwide this technology will be used. This is mine. Okay? So Koreans went long back, Chinese went long back, India, we have started going very recently. So there are a couple of uh, things which are going to be of interest, which is a low mobility large cell, which is a rural use case, which India could be uh, successfully uh, pushed this idea in ITU, got it accepted. That is one small win. Another at the technical point, waveform design, again, uh, academics and a few others who are involved, they pushed this in the HC, which is the European standard as this has to be done. So these two things have been done recently. Okay. People have been doing routinely in other countries, right? Now, more importantly, you want to take, uh, you have to take me into notice. You have to notice me. So, when will people notice you? You have to go. If I have to get your audience, I have to come. I have to come. I cannot sit and then see my thing. I'm great. No, I have to go. I have to talk. I have to listen, and I have to engage. I have to broaden. I have to narrow it. Everything I have to do. India has to do that. Um, IITs, IIC, and uh, several other uh, startups have been funded by DOT, Government of India, for enabling this 5G entry into the international arena. And we have to develop an end-to-end -end 5G testbed. Startups particularly can come to us, right? It is going to be a distributed uh, testbed. IIT Delhi is there, IIT Kanpur is there, IIC is there, IIT Madras is there, IIT Hyderabad is there. Very young people. Radha Krishna Ganti from IIT Madras, um, Kiran Kuchi from IIT Hyderabad. Uh, my own student who is uh, safe in IIT Delhi, our own group in ISC, they are all doing and then creating this distributed test error. Anybody who is in this audience or later, I want to know what is this uh, 5G, can I get a piece of it? Because 10,000 crores, even if you get a small pie on it, which the government is willing to put, right? They are welcome. Because that is the thing. Take an early lead in 5G. We are already late, but late than never, right? Okay. These are some pictures to say that these are all academic institutions. IIT Hyderabad, IIT Hyderabad, IIT Delhi, we have some pictures in IISC. And that is this. This is my own uh, experience in 2007. Okay? This is a, a testbed project which we did with DRDO and uh, private companies. And the trigger for 5G, now I'll go back to the last slide, uh, previous slide. Uh, we said a technology trigger for a new Techno uh, the trigger for a new technology comes from a small set of people, right? That, with, at the risk of breaching humility, I should say that the 5G trigger was given by us from the Indian Institute of Science. <laughs> this is a thing built in India, Hyderabad, 20 antenna system. This is going to be a future base stations technology. This is 20 R of chains. A Hyderabad company with the DRDO design and IIC design. 8 FPGA baseband board, huge, uh, this is typically baseband 5G kind of a thing, which we did in 2011, okay? And what we did was much before, 2007 is, the, is when we broke that. When people were saying two or three antennas can be done in a base station or a cell phone, we said hundreds of antennas are possible. In theory, it was possible. We said in algorithms also it is possible. In practice, it was possible. And uh, we built that and showed, we built six systems. It did, it did not, this is a prototype, not a paper. It, it's a prototype, okay? And this is a patent. See, if you can see, this is my name. And uh, submitted in 2007, approved in 2009. <laughs> and this is the book I think Paneer was uh, talking about. This is the first book on large MIMO system. First book, who were uh, involved in this uh, whole thing. I share this picture for one reason. This generation of uh, people are a different lot. I like them, right? This generation of uh, people are a different lot. I like them. Because this was taken, uh, they came to the, they knew about uh, some uh, ad agency which institute hired for promoting the science literature to be propagated out through their uh, booklets and so on and so forth. They hired an ad agency. Ad agency person comes and talks to us. 
professor, we want to take your uh, 5G, not 5G, this is large MIMO inventions and you take a photograph with her and then we will write an article. Then we said, come, this is just outside my office and uh, the professor Sundarajan is a cycle. Said, uh, where should we go? We should be dressed and all that. No, no, this is very casual, let me be there. Right? This is where he took. And he brought all the gadgets like this with this white umbrella, the reflector. Right? He did it all by himself. One person do it all by himself. Then I was very engaged. He was very engaging. He said, uh, uh, how are you doing this business and so on and so forth. I, he was uh, very telling that finally I own this business and it's an ad agency and so on and so forth. And then I said, where did you study? He said, I am an I am Ahmedabad graduate. I am Ahmedabad graduate and he was doing, doing his own things as if he is the employee for himself. And I like that because I think that is needed. Any entrepreneur that has to succeed should have that spirit. You have to do it yourself if needed. Right? And then motivate others who are with you to come forward along with you as much as you want them to come along with you. Right? So I like this picture for that. Not that I am there, but I always get that picture, that white umbrella that uh, he was behind me, behind that uh, camera and then doing everything like that. I am I'm, I'm the Bath graduate, very young person. So this is the last slide. I think academia, startups, industry, academia we do papers, publications, then we occasionally do patents and then end up doing some prototypes and then subsequently lead to products. I think this is a cycle, four P's I call, papers, patents, uh, prototypes and products. I think all of us in term, one way or other, other than users, we are engineering community, we are not user community. User community, your uh, even uh, uh, two year old uh, son or uh, grandchild will be a user. They will keep uh, games very well on that. But as an engineering uh, community, I think we should focus on all those things. And I thank uh, PSG Alumni Association Chennai chapter for giving me such a nice opportunity. Uh, fine evening with you and uh, sharing my thoughts with you is a real uh, privilege for me. Thank you so much. Do we really develop? Just uh, tell me from the core of your heart, where do you go for your food by developing all these things without having any program on inter-river connections? Thank you, sir. Okay. The question is a very uh, important question. Is um, technology is the end of human civilization. It can be stretched to that. Is uh, in, uh, human civilization is going to see technology frontiers being crossed as the ultimate goal? No. We have humanities, we have so, uh, society with us, and technology can enable technology can enable us to do well in all our endeavors of life in a better way compared to our predecessors. And linking rivers, I would see, is a technological challenge. I view that as what I say as 5G is a technological challenge, even civil engineering uh, challenge for linking rivers, political challenge, socio-economic challenges, challenges. So I will not pit one against the other. I will not do one behind the other. As I said, this is a time that there is an opportunity to do many things simultaneously and it is happening in India. That's all I can say. I will not pick, I know agriculture is important. I know water security is important. I know electricity is important. And where are you, why are you going to moon? Ask that question by all means because we are democracy. We can have that question. I ask myself. I am a socially concerned person but I am also a technologist and a scientist and an educator. I cannot just say that go and then link the river and only then we will do the man, uh, landing on the moon. No. Okay, I think uh, humans have evolved as incremental. Although in between there will be an explosion of an idea. But they will go, go back to growing in steps. Okay, this is the general thing. You will have an explosion of an idea. But then internet was an explosion. But then now you are trying to control everything. Why are we now saying privacy in internet? It is an explosive idea. But then you are trying to control, you know, contain it. Bad things can happen in technology. Safety measures has to be then. Security measures have to be then. So it is a mix. Break the old barriers by new ideas. But then for stability, grow them with some constraints and so on. So 6G will happen. But any G to the next G, there is a reason, technological reason. Right? And 4G to 5G, in my opinion, is a high data rate 
speeds with which you can transfer in the wireless device using large scale MIMO technology which is multi antenna technology, right? Like that 6G, we already are sensing that there are new things. If you s move in a bullet train 300 miles an hour, which India will see, whether we like it or not. We are debating that. It's a very healthy thing. Do we need a bullet train system in the country? It's a valid question. For some of us, it may not be required. I walk to the office all the time. But then, don't you have the cars? Don't you want to have uh, other uh, comforts of technology? They will have to. So the point I'm saying is 6G will come with newer opportunities for all of our people. And that is one of the reasons he wanted me to talk to you, uh, this group about education. Tamil Nadu are generally southern states have crossed two humps in the educational sector. They have crossed primary and elementary and higher school education in the first hump. Right? We have crossed that. There are so many millions of people who did not have that. We have crossed that. There was one hump thanks to the political regime in those days. Then, college education has become a hump. Whether you like it or not, opening up of so many education colleges in government sector as well as private sector. We can keep on debating that whether it is right or not, but things have to move. We have so much of engineering colleges, so many graduates come thanks to uh, those things. IT got enabled and a lot of homes got good incomes and their lifestyle improved, right? IT got benefited because of the second hump in engineering education and uh, science education, which is there in the second hump. Now, we are finding, is IT is going to be the last frontier? No. We are seeing already more than IT, right? Where is that? And that is the third frontier, or the third hump that you have to look for. Look for in quality research-based educations. I think that is a bigger subject that we have to talk about in all areas of design, engineering and science and technology and humanities and so on look for quality research based uh, uh, education primaries there is a growth college there is growth but look for this. the policy makers have to listen to that kind of a question what next not me what my grandchild is going to see right not me i have taken the benefit of my two generations people who really did without having formal education they did it now we are formally educated we can do a lot more so I think the research-based education is what I would say repeatedly that we have to focus. Central government is taking a cue of this and they are pushing for ideas. I think all the state governments, particularly in the southern states, who have already taken a lead, right? In the other first two humps, take the third choice. You have to work it, work it out. Nobody will come and give it. Nobody came and told that open these primary colleges, 16,000 of them in the state of Tamil Nadu. Nobody came and told. It was done, right? Like that, ask ourselves what is the research that we have to do so that the next two or three generations of our own people will do things well and the whole will, world will look at us rather than we go and then look at others now.